I'm a little afraid of it because I want to think of the players as players, not as employees. There's a big water cooler topic today everywhere, um, especially if you love college sports here. This about the decision that grants football players at Northwestern University the right to unionize. The decision by the National Labor Relations Board in Chicago says the athletes should be considered university employees because they work between 20 and 50 hours a week, get paid in the form of scholarships, and generate millions of dollars for the school. Now, Northwestern says it's going to appeal the decision. This thing could be appealed literally up six levels of the court system here uh, because they don't believe uh, the students are, by definition, employees. So this is more of a philosophical debate here. This doesn't change anything right now, but it definitely has started to be. Do we all think the college kids, especially the top ones, I mean, we always talk, you're a Syracuse grad here. You were in the athletic department. Carmelo Anthony brought a whole lot more into the college than he got in terms of one-year college tuition, and we can find other examples. So we do think, no debate, that they're getting not an equal uh, slice of the pie. However, if this were to become, in effect, law, you played football um, at, at Hofstra. The idea that the Hofstra's of the world could keep up with the Alabamas of the world here and there'd be some kind of pie that would be shared, forget about just within football. What about all the other teams that don't generate any revenue? How, how would this be sustainable, at least with the college sports system that we recognize right now? No, it wouldn't be sustainable if this decision was upheld. I read, didn't read the decision, but I think what this does more than anything else, else is propels the discussion of whether college players should be paid in any form while they're at the school. And I think that this is going to change the NCAA's vision because they're under attack. Their schools are under attack one by one by one. The NCAA controls these decisions at the end of the day if the courts don't overstep them. The NCAA needs to step up and say that players can get at least a stipend uh, for participating in college sports. It's nonsense that well, they've well, been okay, left out of the money it game tricky. here. This is the details. Andrew, everybody, let's say you're now at the University of Michigan. Football player goes out, runs through a tunnel. There's 100,000 screaming, paying fans in the stands, let alone all the merchandising, TV contracts, et cetera. Michigan crew team? I don't think anybody's paying for the, to freeze their you-know-whats to see him go row here on Saturday morning. The money is part of it, but let's... No, but, I, but, I also, all kids, but, but I also... Should want, they all get a well, piece of pie? They should, and, and let me explain. Because the, think of the other things that a labor union brings and can bring that aren't necessarily fiscal. How about health care for injuries for these athletes who injure themselves no matter what the sport is? If you, you know, bust out your knee or you tear a rotator cuff, that's going to bother you the rest of your life. That's right. You've done that for the benefit of the university, whether you're playing football or basketball or crew or wrestling or lacrosse. So maybe a health care system that, that pays dividends for all of these student athletes down the line or protections that say if you get injured, you can't lose your scholarship and you still have the right to that full scholarship. So there are some base protections that can be provided to every student athlete no matter what sport and what caliber of the sport that they're but playing. If, to me, Dominic, if somehow there isn't a governing body who decides this, you've now opened up Pandora's box where, and I believe they should be paid. I don't know, I don't think anybody knows the right formula right now, but when you were at Syracuse and you were with the athletic department, did you consider the basketball team and the football team university employees? And did you feel the same way, let's say, about um, the wrestling team? Excellent question. Uh, many of the athletes were, I was a graduate student at the time, many of the athletes were in the classes that are on an undergraduate basis. They are employees. They are rarely in class. When they are there, they are struggling to keep up and they are tutors uh, to help them. Why? Because they are on the road traveling to a game half across the country. And you ask, should they all be paid the same? That's a good question as far as the student athlete, but I say this to you, Richard, just look at Manhattan College, not far from here. Look at all the new buildings that are going up. Do you think that's a coincidence? Or could it be that they've been in the big tournament for the last couple of years? Every athlete is not bringing the same dollar to the university. Football and basketball teams, I mean, they, they're, they're almost a license okay. in some cases to print money. But now we're saying not all athletes are created equal. I happen to agree with that, but now all of a sudden, if you have a scholarship, your scholarship is going to be, who's going to decide? For example, uh, women's basketball. Uh, most colleges are lucky if they get 1,000 fans. University of Connecticut, they get as many as the men. So how do you make 
who, who's Solomon here? That's my problem. Who decides how this formula works? Is it school by school? <coughs> is it sport by sport? I, conference by conference? I mean, I think this ruling is outrageous. I really do. Uh, and I think it's wrong. I think it will never go by. I, it may lead to discussions, but it will not pass muster. There cannot be a connection between a student and an employee. What about pensions? What about all the other issues that employees? I don't know. And the nexus, this nexus of a scholarship being equal to being paid, a scholarship is based on your capability in the athletic field. Um, I don't think this, the decision... But there be, is I a contract, I'll just say, which is uh, there's this misnomer in the public that somebody gives you a, a scholarship to go play football. If after the first year you get hurt or the coach doesn't think that you're now at the top of the depth chart, they can revoke your scholarship. And you have no recourse to that other than transferring without a scholarship but anymore. But the answer there is to do the contract differently. And, and, and perhaps this, this will generate a better discussion about what, including health benefits and what have you, which I think are important. But we've got to get back to the idea that education is for education. That ultimately a lot of the best students and it the best take athletes. take tango for that, though. The college has to see it the same way, that they're not just trying to keep these guys eligible so that they can make money on Saturdays with a TV contract. Well, that's yeah, right, but that's but not going to change. You yeah. know, and I, I want to answer your question directly, okay? There, there, will, there should be a stipend, health benefits. Um, every athlete won't be paid the same, but there will be a top level. Maybe it's $500 a week, let's just say, okay? So any one of the sports can be paid up to $500 a week. Each school has to pool the one money. question. The punter makes the same amount as the quarterback? Absolutely. The same scholarship. Please, you look at the past, the way they handle yeah. it. Everyone just got a scholarship. It was $1 amount. It was the scholarship. Mm -hmm. Now you just say, let's say, say $500 stipend a week. Yep. Okay? And it's the same thing. And, and yeah, the rower and the women's basketball, women's mm -hmm. lacrosse, each one can be paid up to that, and it has to be based on the finances of that school. All right. We are going to jump to a quick commercial break here. Um, uh, we could keep this conversation going online, but I do want to get... Um, to a commercial that you got to see. We're going to talk politics here. I got the right folks around the table. We've seen politicians say dumb things or put out silly ads here, but this one takes the cake. We're going to talk about that and how the modern era, a lot different than it was 20 years ago, and how it's really changed and made it harder to run a campaign. <laughs> 